much, Enrique. I've been so excited about this, and I, I have a, a packed agenda for the next half hour, but I, I promise we're going to get through it. Uh, this may be a bit of a departure from what you've been hearing in other workshops. You know, I know that Hacking HR community is very focused on technology and the, the future of work. And um, I've, I've moderated some, I've attended so many events locally here in Chicago and, and online. I was a part of the online, um, the massive online conference that just recently happened, talking on the topic of introversion. And we got such good response from that that I, I propose to Enrique that we have a, an additional conversation about it today. So this may be a bit of a departure in some ways from what uh, other things that you have, are hearing, but I'd like to think that is very relevant um, to what we're going through right now. So what I'm going to share with you is an online version of my network like an introvert session that I've, that I've done around town. Um, and I'm going to try to incorporate conversation around um, what we are facing now specifically. So I will, I'll try to weave that in as we go. One of my favorite memes out there, introverts unite just of course separately and in your own homes. So, <laughs> this is absolutely one of my favorites. And so now you would think, well, this is the perfect time. I, I saw a guy recently in an email say, this should be our Olympics. You know, we are coming together, but separately in our own homes. Uh, and initially, I talked with a number of fellow introverts that said, yeah, you know, we're digging this. We're okay with this space. Of course, you know, preferring that it not um, involve the coronavirus and some of these health issues that, that we're certainly facing and, and economic, um, uh, but, you know, consequences, I suppose. But in the meantime, social distancing, I've known people to say, hey, after this is over, can we still keep a six foot rule <laughs> between ourselves? And other people, you know, this pace, taking some of the things off my calendar, I'm okay with it. That being said, as this drags on, you know, even those of us who are introverts are saying, well, this is, this is tough. You know, we, we do crave meaningful connections still. And so how are we getting that? And, and kudos to Enrique for what he's doing with these workshops, because this gives us an opportunity, introvert, extrovert, whatever, to come together online and connect meaningfully around very relevant topics. So I appreciate that um, personally, Enrique, and I'm sure everybody else does as well. I want to be clear here that I am not an expert in introversion. I happen to be one. I don't want to say that I speak on behalf of all introverts, and that's a very introvert thing to do to show up with a disclaimer right off the bat. Um, I, like anybody else these days, actually less frequently when I'm in the grocery store, on my list of things to do, will say, is to not run into anybody else. I would prefer not to. There are occasions where I open up and I'm excited to see somebody I know, but for the most part, I'm challenged by connection, human connection, just as much as anybody else's. I very much crave it in, in my own unique way, but I'm also challenged by it. And I want for this to be, if anything, uh, an opportunity for you, regardless of your personality, to style, personality style, to show up and feel sort of safe in this environment to say, it's okay. However I choose to connect with the world is okay. There's nothing wrong with me. Um, let's talk openly about how we do this and, and what that spectrum looks like. What do you think this number, 25 to 40% refers to? Well, you can guess. That is the percentage of people in the general population that I identify in some way with, with being introverted. There are a number of misconceptions around introversion. And a lot of them have to do with it being a fear, a, a fear of socializing with other people, a fear of connecting, a fear of being out of your home <laughs> with other folks. Right off the bat, let me clarify that introversion is not a fear. It is not um, equivalent with being antisocial or even shy. There are some people who are introverted that are shy. There are some people who are extroverted that are shy. Um, but if you go to an introvert and say, oh, I understand you, that being introverted means you're shy, you're likely to offend that person because those two terms are not necessarily synonymous. Well, what is, is introversion then? I think quite often we hear it defined as where you get your energy from. Um, so introverts will say, I get my energy from um, being by myself with my thoughts in solitude. And extroverts will say, I get my energy from being with other people and being a very social person. Unfortunately, people take that a little bit too far, I think. And folks will say, okay, well, then that means that introverts, um, because they get their energy from being alone and, and 
um, in solitude on occasion, then that means that they would prefer not to connect with other people or that they don't get energy from others. And Susan Cain, um, who I'll refer to at least a couple times in our time together, has said on a recent Work Life podcast with Adam Grant, everybody draws energy from, from being with other people, whether you're introverted or extroverted. The question is, what kind of energy or, and how much interaction with people? What are you doing with that energy? Introverts are known to be energy savers. So when we talk about what we're doing with that energy, introverts want to be saving up that energy. If they anticipate something coming up, a, a connection online, for example, on Zoom, they may be just as excited about it as anybody else, but they're going to be saving up energy for that interaction. And that interaction is likely to deplete that energy. Extroverts are energy spenders. And we, we've heard that there's actually a physiological underpinning to this, that introverts are in general, physiologically more easily stimulated. So we'll often seek to avoid that natural stimulation. Whereas extroverts are more uh, or less easily stimulated. So look for it in their environment. So I, I thought that was an interesting bit that I've read along the way. And I'm going to share a couple of resources on where I found some of this information myself. I mean, you see some other things there and other things there. Introverts often think before speaking. Extroverts often speak before thinking. I've known people that say there isn't a, a thought that pops into my head that I don't speak out loud. That is my way of getting clarity around um, what I believe and what I think about things. Introverts I've known have said, I wouldn't dare open my mouth before thinking it through um, sufficiently and thoroughly so that when I do finally speak, whatever I have to say is, is well thought out and well informed and well researched perhaps. You see some other things there as well. Yet, um, so when it comes to, I guess, the, the, the topic of professional networking, either on or offline, and I, I mentioned the word networking to people on social media, these are some of the responses that I get. Oh, networking, geez, it's, all, it's always awkward. It's anxiety inducing. I even had a woman go so far as to say that when I say, okay, what do you think of when you think of professional networking? She said, sitting in Chicago traffic during rush hour in summer construction when it's raining and the Cubs are playing, that's something I would rather do than professionally network, which lets you know that people have really strong opinions and not the most positive opinions about what it feels like to professionally network on or offline and connect with people in that sort of environment. So what I want to do today is talk through why that is and, and how we can come at it perhaps from a slightly different perspective even knowing that it's a valuable thing to do, a valuable way to spend our time. We can uh, find meaningful work. We can relate with other people. We can find support if given a chance. Quite often or given a choice, a lot of us would just choose to stay home instead rather than attend a networking event online or, or in person. So I want to propose um, five different ways right off the bat here where uh, ways that uh, reasons why I think we are challenged when it comes to connecting meaningfully with other people. And one is this thought, and it's, it's attributed to Albert Einstein. It's the jury's out as to whether or not he actually said this. But this thought that um, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life believing that it's stupid. And I love this because what it's saying is that we often judge ourselves by what we see other people doing. And Enrique and I have had this conversation in the past too, when I was getting started with HR Hot Seat and he was getting started in various ways with the Hacking HR community. You know, we'd look at what we were each doing and it would be so easy for me to compare what I was doing to him or vice versa. And if you judge yourself by what other people are doing or what's expected of you by other people, you never fully embrace what you naturally bring to a networking event, a conversation, and certainly a relationship. And I think in particular, it's easy for introverts to look out there and say, well, extroverts are doing this really well. They seem that they can network very naturally and get so much out of it. I don't operate that way. And, and so I'm not sure that I can do that. Likewise, extroverts might say, you know what, I'm just not comfortable networking. Like I'm comfortable in, in social settings of various other sorts. But when it comes to networking, you know, I, 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 it doesn't come as naturally to me perhaps to do X, Y, and Z as it does to introverts. And because of that, then I might shy away from this networking situation. So right off the bat, we have to stop judging ourselves by how we see other people being successful. 
Um, number two, I think that we don't spend enough time really getting a sense of what our own strengths are and, and being in touch with who we are from an introspective um, aspect. Those of you who know me know that I do a lot with the DISC personality assessment. That is a framework and a common language that I've chosen to help me understand how I'm wired individually, but then also how you are wired and what those differences might mean. Most importantly then, how I can bridge that gap, how I can understand about myself that when I'm in a networking conversation, whether online or in person, that I'm going to naturally default to certain strengths that I feel that I have or certain tendencies that I bring to relationships. But then to also understand about you that you are going to bring certain tendencies and that I can bridge that gap, that I can adapt to your communication style so that we are able to connect more effectively when we both jump on Zoom together. If I'm a details guy, which I happen to be, and you're a big picture person, if I force you to speak my language when we're networking, there's going to be a, a wall there. You're going to walk away and say, yeah, Eric was nice enough, but I'm not sure that we connected. If instead I'm able to embrace about me that I'm detail oriented, but learn to speak your language a little bit, adapt a bit, I'm going to be able to connect with you a little bit more effectively. DISC is a, is a resource that I use myself and recommend with others and, and facilitate for other organizations to help them understand better what their strengths are when they are connecting and building rapport and relationships with one another. Number three, third uh, way that I think we are challenged when it comes to connecting meaningfully with other people is I feel like we're given the tools to do so, but we're not necessarily taught how to use them effectively. My one example that I think is appropriate for now is LinkedIn. You know, everybody's, a lot of people are using it. We'll say there are, uh, some that don't based on the work that they do. But in the business community, it's a very popular and understandably so a resource. So we're given LinkedIn, we create a, a profile, and then we just kind of have at it, right? We see a button that says connect. And so we hit the connect button and we think, oh, we're connected. We're good to go. I found Enrique. I hit connect. connect. He accepted it. And we're done. I will say probably nine out of the 10 connection requests that I receive on LinkedIn are not personalized. If you want to start your journey anywhere um, toward connecting more meaningfully with people online, start by personalizing your connection request on LinkedIn. You can do it on your desktop. You can do it on your phone. Both, um, both um, tools allow you to personalize your connection request on the phone. You have to hit three dots and then it gives you the opportunity to personalize your invite. But give that context right off the bat. So most people don't. I still accept it, especially if they have anything to do with HR, because that's the world that I play in. And then I, I step number two for me is saying, you know, um, how can I be a value? Or more importantly, I decided to word it this way. Um, what is your motivation for connecting with me personally? And most of the time I don't get a response. That's how I know we're give, being given the tools to connect meaningfully with people, but not necessarily using them to our advantage. Personalize your LinkedIn requests right off the bat. Um, a fourth way that uh, we are, I think we are challenged in how we're connecting with other people, especially at networking events, whether online or in person, is that we're aiming for this point, I'm pointing here, down the path, around the corner. That's ultimately when we're networking, that's what we should have, should have in mind, that this is a long-term relationship that we are investing in. And we don't necessarily know off the bat where it's going to go. Um, but we need to start somewhere. Instead of seeing what's around the bend, we connect with people online and all we can see are these trees right up front. We can say, okay, well, I need a job or um, I need a client. I need a connection or an introduction of some sort. Those are those trees in the front that are distracting us from what our goals should be. So instead, our conversation becomes transactional and superficial. The very things that, especially we as introverts, um, everybody, of course, but introverts are looking for meaningful connection. I would rather have a meaningful conversation with one person than superficial conversations with, with 10 or 12. And so, yes, I understand that those trees are there and those distractions are there, but remember, we're building a relationship that is going to pay off over time for both people. It's a true dialogue and it's going to impact both. I'm going to be focused on being of service to you. And I don't necessarily know right in the beginning how that's going to happen. Be open to and have faith that the payoff for any, any relationship is going to be that, that meaningful end result that is often around the corner and not as easily seen. 
A fifth and final challenge that I think we face, and especially introverts, is that we don't like being in the spotlight. You know, and there are some people, extroverts will often say that they're more comfortable on stage or in the spotlight. And introverts will often say, you know what, that's just not where I shine. You know, I'd rather remain in the background. I'd rather be the one, um, you know, I'd rather not have the attention on me. One of the things that I'd like to say then is that the people who least uh, are least comfortable, comfortable in the spotlight are also slowest to realize that they can control where that spotlight is pointing. So if you don't feel comfortable in the spotlight, you have some agency in this. You can point it towards somebody else. You can put that spotlight on somebody else so that you aren't uh, feeling as anxious or nervous in a conversation. Well, how do we do that? How do we point that spotlight elsewhere? And what are some other tips that we can walk away with today that will help us connect more effectively with people online and in person so that we're having meaningful conversations instead of that are relational in nature rather than transactional and superficial, something that I think is beneficial to all of us. Well, first of all, seek first to understand and then to be understood. This is Stephen Covey. He passed away a few years ago now. And I love this concept of, you know, I'm going to come into a conversation. I'm going to be so excited about what I bring and maybe distracted by what I need and have all of these interests and, and, um, and passions. And I, uh, a good friend of mine, Gregory Tall, often says, you know, it's, it's more important to be um, interested than interesting. I like to have a good mixture of both, but if you have to lead with either of those things, being interesting is, is might be your best bet. Depends on the situation, right? So Stephen Covey says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. I want to ask you a number of questions. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your business and your work. We'll get to my needs, but if I can help you first, the universal law of reciprocity says, if you help enough other people get what they need, you will get what you need. So let me put the spotlight on you and ask you questions. A number of you know that I sing classically and once in a rehearsal, uh, one of my, um, my conductors stopped and he was frustrated and he said, you should always listen more loudly than you sing. And at first I didn't quite understand what he meant, but then I thought that's so important, that's so impactful that if I show up and I just begin to sing without first understanding what the audience needs from me, what we need from each other, in terms of fellow singers, what the conductor needs from me, I've lost my greatest opportunity to be of value. And there are a number of salespeople who know this um, better than a lot of us, that if they first um, start out by asking questions rather than speaking and pitching, they'll get all of the information they need such that when it's their turn, they can respond with something so much more meaningful. Ask somebody, a meaningful follow-up question. So you're actively listening, you're engaged with somebody on Zoom, they're telling you their story. Um, you wanna encourage that by asking meaningful follow-up questions. One of my favorite stories is my wife and I visiting friends of hers. And um, these two friends of hers adopted five children pretty much all at once, which is, I just can't imagine that. That's gotta be quite a thing, but they, it was important to them that they had all five um, children who I believe were all siblings all at one time. And we went to visit. And one of the fathers came up to greet us at the door with his youngest, Derek, at the time was four years old. And uh, the, the father who had invited us in said, um, this is Eric, and, and you remember Katie, who's my wife. Um, you remember Katie's a teacher, right? And Derek got you know this big smile on his face, and he nodded. And uh, the father paused, and I knew something was happening. I wasn't sure what it was. And uh, the father said, so what can we ask Katie? you know, what's a good question to ask Katie about that? And Derek said, what do you teach? He paused for a moment and he responded, what do you teach with the biggest smile on his face? And my jaw hit the ground. And some of you might not think that that's, you know, particularly notable, but I'm thinking here's this four-year-old who's being taught how to ask meaningful follow-up questions that we as adults often struggle with. Derek could have said, oh, I, I'm in school. You know, I have a teacher. I've, you know, I've learned this recently. But instead, he kept the spotlight on my wife and asked her a meaningful follow-up question to learn more about her story. And I just was blown away by that. So ask people what their story is. But also be familiar with what yours is. As much as we would like to keep the spotlight on other people and ask them meaningful follow-up questions, at some point, people are going to ask you that dreaded question, that scripted question, what do you do? You can't avoid it. 
so what I recommend is having something is, is as much as we don't want to be scripted, and we'll get to that in a moment, I think there's value in beginning with something that is just so you're confident in your value and you can riff on it. You can improvise and answer in different ways the more comfortable you are with the value you bring to the world. And this is a basic uh, formula that I recommend. I help whom to do what by, you know, the way that you help them. What is the, what is the method? And then finally, you could leave it at those first three if you want, but you can add this final one, which is so that they can. What is the lasting result? What is the lasting impact of your work? Take some time after the workshops today to fill this in, those four things. And that, that is the beginning of a good value statement so that you can have that ready for when people ask that dreaded question, which comes up professionally networking. It comes up at the Thanksgiving dinner table. It's going to come up left and right. What do you do? And you have that ready. My example is what you see before you. I help individuals and teams better understand their own communication and personality styles, how via one-on-one -on -one coaching and group workshops, and then to what end so that they can connect more effectively with others. This is more marketing language. It's, it wouldn't come out of my mouth this way, but the clearer I am on this value proposition, the more meaningfully I can answer your questions and ask you in return to let me know what value you bring and what you do. Along those lines, and you know what, I apologize, I forgot to adjust the um, URL I'm noticing here um, off the bat, but I'm gonna make the, the, the same, um, I'm gonna make these same resources available to you. We don't wanna answer scripted questions, yet we ask them. You know, we, we don't, the, the scripted questions feel, um, feel superficial and transactional and all those things that we don't want. Yet when we're given the opportunity to ask somebody else a question, we start with what do you do? The very question we don't want to have to answer ourselves. So if you want to avoid scripted questions or scripted answers, you want to avoid scripted questions. So instead of asking, for example, what do you do? One of the things I recommend asking in a networking conversation is why do you do what you do? The what will show up at some point. You, you'll figure that out over the course of your conversation. But instead of starting with what do you do, start with why do you do what you do? And that one word why is going gonna, to gonna be so, so interesting. You'll be able to see it on the person's face. When you ask what do you do, the response is, oh, yeah, so, oh, well, so, there's something along those lines. Yeah, so means, oh, I've answered this a million times, and wh whatever comes next is going to be pretty well scripted. When you ask, why do you do what you do? They stop, they pause, they might look a little uncomfortable. They don't have a scripted response for that. They, they, maybe they haven't been asked that ever. I guarantee that whatever follows is going to be so much more interesting, so much more meaningful than anything you would have, have gotten otherwise. I've put together a, a PDF of my favorite networking tips, and I'm going to make that available at the end in an appropriate URL as opposed to what you're seeing there. This may take you to a similar place, but I want to make sure that, that you get the right one. Another tip that I like to share, and uh, this one was kind of an eye-opener for me. I thought, okay, as an introvert who doesn't like to be the center of attention, why is it that when I am invited to networking events for groups and circles that I'm less familiar with, so for example, non-HR events, why is it that I feel so nervous and anxious? Yet when I am hosting my own, even as an introvert, on stage perhaps, you know, in the spotlight, I feel more comfortable. And I realized it was because I was playing that role of host. I had a goal. I, my goal was to make you feel comfortable showing up to my event, that I could connect with individuals, which is something that I think that I do well. So even though I may have 120 people at an HR hot seat event, I'm still seeing individuals that, that I can welcome. And these days, those are online on Zoom, like, like so many other things. So I thought, okay, well, it's just a, it's kind of a mind hack. When I am going then to other events, I'm not going to put on a bow tie and walk around with a, with a plate of hors d'oeuvres because I'm not truly the host. But I'm going to have in my mind, as my mindset, that my goal is to make other people feel comfortable. I'm going to find the person in the room who seems as uncomfortable as I do and make it my goal to have them open up and to have them feel welcome and, and warmly welcomed. So that's um, one of my favorite tips to share. 
resources. I'd love to leave you with resources. So I'm going to uh, share this, this the correct URL to that PDF. But two of my favorite books, if you want to learn more about introversion, and, and this talk has been primarily about that, but it's also about just in general, how we can, regardless of personality style, how we can connect more meaningfully with other people. Two of my favorite books, you see them in front of you. I have them to my side as well. Quiet by Susan Cain, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. That is the book that most people will go to first and foremost to learn about introversion. And then also the second book, The Introvert Advantage, How to Thrive in an Extrovert World by Marty Olson Laney. Two books that were really, even as somebody who has identifies with being introverted myself, are very eye-opening. And I should, should qualify, I didn't earlier clarify that it really is a spectrum, that nobody is 100% introverted, 100% extroverted. Even Carl Jung and others who talked about this um, initially said that, that there, there couldn't be a person who is 100% one way or the other. And actually, people have argued that the more we are toward one end or the other, the more of a sign or a symptom that is of what Carol Dweck calls the, um, the fixed mindset instead of the growth mindset. So all of that aside, there is a spectrum. And many of us will say, well, it depends, or I feel a little bit more ambiverted. We all kind of are to some extent. Many of us will, though, lean towards one or the other. Um, no right or wrong, no good or bad, but it's about um, understanding, having that introspection, understanding what you bring to a networking relationship and conversation. And um, and embracing that and running, running with it instead of away from it. Um, Enrique was kind enough to mention HR Hot Seat. You can find out more about that at hrhotseat.com, but we come together across the country in 10 different licensed chapters to have structured conversations so that introverts who show up are networking in a very structured way. We may have large group conversations, but we're also doing breakout conversations, including now online via Zoom and some other platforms that allow us to connect well, individually, one-on-one, -on -one, and also in small groups where those of us who are introverted can feel a little bit more comfortable rather than overwhelmed by the networking environment. But of course, since I'm running a lot of these events, it's gonna to get to a point in the night where I kick everybody out and say, I've reached my limit. I've spent all of the energy that I have at this point and everybody needs to go home. Thank you for being here. Thank you for connecting, but we're finished. And that's the introvert in me. Um, drawing that, that connection and that time together to a definite close. That is the end of my presentation today. I hope that you will follow this, the correct URL, harmonyinsights.com slash network like an introvert. If all goes well, that'll take you to a page on my website where I share um, no strings attached. You don't even have to provide an email address. I will share all of the resources that we talked about in our time together today.